Atrophy. Atrophy. Atrophy is a verb meaning to waste away. Here are a few ways in which atrophy can be used. The conductor warned the cellist that her talent would atrophy if she did not practice regularly. A poor diet and little exercise cause the body to atrophy, making daily tasks very difficult to complete. Now you say atrophy. Try the word again. Atrophy. Atrophy. Atrophy is a noun meaning the wasting away of a body organ or tissue. Here are a few ways in which atrophy can be used. Due to the atrophy of her thigh muscle, Angela couldn't walk and had to undergo physical therapy. Physicians were certain the atrophy would worsen if the athlete didn't start training again. Now you say atrophy. Try the word again. Atrophy. Atrophy. Atrophy is a noun meaning any progressive decline or failure. Here are a few ways in which atrophy can be used. The teacher called Jordan's parents to discuss the atrophy of Jordan's grades. The atrophy of the once great city was attributed to the corrupt politician's new immigration policy. Now you say atrophy. Try the word again. Bastion. Bastion. Bastion is a noun meaning a fortified place, stronghold. Here are a few ways in which bastion can be used. The underground shelter served as a bastion for the family during tornado season. The scouts found a bastion in the woods to set up camp. Now you say bastion. Try the word again. Concord. Concord. Concord is a noun meaning a treaty, pact. Here are a few ways in which Concord can be used. In the best interests of their children, the divorced couple reached a concord over custody rights. The contest judges had reached a concord and announced the winners. Now you say concord. Try the word again. Concord. Concord. Concord is a noun meaning a treaty, pact, covenant. Here are a few ways in which concord can be used. World leaders met earlier in the year to seek a concord and avoid future hostilities. The competing companies made a concord that they would not disparage one another's reputation. Now you say concord. Try the word again. Consummate. Consummate. Consummate is an adjective meaning complete or perfect in the highest degree. Here are a few ways in which consummate can be used. All of the bestseller lists agreed the new novel was consummate and may be considered a classic someday. Always on time and prepared for work, Jim was considered the consummate professional. Now you say consummate. Try the word again. Consummate. Consummate. Consummate is a verb meaning to bring to a state of completion or perfection. Here are a few ways in which consummate can be used. Limited resources made it very difficult to consummate the project. Much to the student's chagrin, there was not enough time to consummate the project in class and were assigned to finish it at home. Now you say consummate. Try the word again. Disarray. Disarray. Disarray is a verb meaning to throw into disorder. Here are a few ways in which disarray can be used. An unexpected fire drill disarrayed the class schedule for the day.
The fourth graders took the dare to disarray the cafeteria with a food fight. Now you say disarray. Try the word again. Disarray. Disarray. Disarray is a noun meaning disorder, confusion. Here are a few ways in which disarray can be used. After the storm had passed, the town was left in a state of disarray. Moving the meeting to the afternoon caused disarray for everyone in the office. Now you say disarray. Try the word again. Exigency. Exigency. Exigency is a noun, meaning urgency, pressure, urgent demand, pressing need, an emergency. Here are a few ways in which exigency can be used. The exigencies of the legislative process ultimately necessitated a bipartisanship collaboration. The exigency of an impending deadline kept her up working through the night. Now you say exigency. Try the word again. Flotsam. Flotsam. Flotsam is a noun, meaning floating debris. Here are a few ways in which flotsam can be used. The environmental activists lobbied to reduce the amount of flotsam in the ocean. The shipwreck had littered the ocean with flotsam. Now you say flotsam. Try the word again. Flotsam. Flotsam. Flotsam is a noun meaning homeless, impoverished people. Here are a few ways in which flotsam can be used. The now wealthy businessman remembered as a child being referred to as flotsam. The governor was advised not to use the term flotsam when addressing the city's homeless population. Now you say flotsam. Try the word again. Frenetic. Frenetic. Frenetic is an adjective meaning frenzied, highly agitated. Here are a few ways in which frenetic can be used. The frenetic shoppers streamed through the doors as soon as they opened on Black Friday. During finals week, the library is bustling with frenetic students. Now you say frenetic. Try the word again. Glean. Glean. Glean is a verb meaning to gather bit by bit. Here are a few ways in which glean can be used. The professor asked his research assistants to glean information on the city's traffic patterns over the course of one year. They watched the sparrows glean twigs from the ground to build their nest. Now you say glean. Try the word again. Glean. Glean. Glean is a verb, meaning to gather small quantities of grain left in a field by the reapers. Here are a few ways in which glean can be used. After they reaped the first harvest of grain, there was a bit more left to glean from the field. The farmers gleaned the last of the grain for the season. Now you say glean. Try the word again. Grouse. Grouse. Grouse is a verb meaning to complain, grumble. Here are a few ways in which grouse can be used. Having been a server for many years, Yvonne frequently groused about poor restaurant service. After both of her flights had been canceled, the businesswoman called the airline to grouse and was given a full refund. Now you say grouse. Try the word again. Grouse. Grouse. Grouse is a noun meaning a type of game bird. Here are a few ways in which grouse can be used. 
The young hunter was in such awe of the grouse's beautiful plumage that he could not shoot it. The bird-watching group petitioned to have a threatened species of grouse listed under the Endangered Species Act. Now you say grouse. Try the word again. Grouse. Grouse. Grouse is a noun, meaning a complaint. Here are a few ways in which grouse can be used. The food critic's main grouse about the restaurant was that the dining room felt a little claustrophobic. The honeymooner's only grouse was that their trip to Paris was too short. Now you say grouse. Try the word again. Incarcerate. Incarcerate. Incarcerate is a verb meaning to imprison, confine, jail. Here are a few ways in which incarcerate can be used. There wasn't enough evidence to incarcerate the suspect. The corrupt stockbroker had been incarcerated for insider trading and financial fraud. Now you say incarcerate. Try the word again. Incumbent. Incumbent. Incumbent is a noun, meaning one who holds a specific office at the time spoken of. Here are a few ways in which incumbent can be used. The incumbent's unsuccessful time in office diminished his chance for re-election. The incumbent utilized social networking media to bolster his new re-election campaign. Now you say incumbent. Try the word again. Incumbent. Incumbent. Incumbent is an adjective, meaning obligatory, required. Here are a few ways in which incumbent can be used. In order to become a member of the book club, it is incumbent upon me to attend the next meeting. It is incumbent on all graduating seniors to complete course requirements and final exams. Now you say incumbent. Try the word again. Jocular. Jocular. Jocular is an adjective meaning humorous, jesting, jolly, joking. Here are a few ways in which jocular can be used. Due to his jocular personality, Tom was voted the class clown by his peers. The advertisement firm took a risk in presenting a jocular ad campaign for a car insurance company. Now you say jocular. Try the word again. Ludicrous. Ludicrous. Ludicrous is an adjective meaning ridiculous, laughable, absurd. Here are a few ways in which ludicrous can be used. When the child got older, she realized how ludicrous it was to believe that pigs could fly. The parameters of the assignment were so ludicrous that the students found it impossible to complete. Now you say ludicrous. Try the word again. Mordant. Mordant. Mordant is an adjective meaning biting or caustic in thought, manner, or style. Here are a few ways in which mordant can be used. Although Jackie thought her sarcasm was charming, her friends found it to be mordant. The therapist's mordant remarks were too blunt for some of his clients. Now you say mordant. Try the word again. Mordant. Mordant. Mordant is an adjective meaning sharply or bitterly harsh. Here are a few ways in which mordant can be used. Mike takes pride in his brutal honesty but many people find it to be mordant. The fashion designer's comments about the model's physical shortcomings were mordant and offensive. 
Now you say mordant. Try the word again. Nettle. Nettle. Nettle is a noun, meaning a prickly or stinging plant. Here are a few ways in which nettle can be used. Tiffany developed a rash where the nettle had brushed her leg in the woods. The gardener tried to rid the lawn of the nettle bushes. Now you say nettle. Try the word again. Nettle. Nettle. Nettle is a verb meaning to arouse displeasure, impatience, or anger. Here are a few ways in which nettle can be used. Sally devised a plan to nettle the pranksters. The camp counselor was nettled by the buzzing sound of mosquitoes in the cabin. Now you say nettle. Try the word again. Nettle. Nettle. Nettle is a verb meaning to vex or irritate severely. Here are a few ways in which nettle can be used. The intricate puzzle was fun at first, but after many hours began to nettle me. The students thought that by boycotting class and nettling the administrators with incessant phone calls and emails, their complaints would finally be heard. Now you say nettle. Try the word again. Pecuniary. Pecuniary. Pecuniary is an adjective, meaning consisting of or measured in money, of or related to money. Here are a few ways in which pecuniary can be used. Financial aid offices provide pecuniary assistance to all students. During the Great Depression, many people lost their jobs and experienced grave pecuniary difficulties. Now you say pecuniary. Try the word again. Pusillanimous. Pusillanimous. Pusillanimous is an adjective meaning contemptibly cowardly or mean-spirited. Here are a few ways in which pusillanimous can be used. The former heavyweight champion disappointed the crowd with his pusillanimous performance in the boxing ring. The teacher was fired for reinforcing the pusillanimous behavior of the class bully. Now you say pusillanimous. Try the word again. Recumbent. Recumbent. Recumbent is an adjective, meaning in a reclining position, lying down, in the posture of one sleeping or resting. Here are a few ways in which recumbent can be used. Sarah always assumed a recumbent position on the sofa when watching a movie. Doctors advise patients with lower back problems to use the proper support when in a recumbent position. Now you say recumbent. Try the word again. Stratagem. Stratagem. Stratagem is a noun, meaning a scheme to outwit or deceive an opponent or to gain an end. Here are a few ways in which stratagem can be used. The coach guarded his notebook containing his winning stratagems in a safe under his desk. The opposing army knew their stratagem wasn't clever enough to gain victory. Now you say stratagem. Try the word again. Reforming the Security Council, Newspaper Editorial For more than a decade, diplomats and politicians the world over have sought to reform the United Nations Security Council. While everyone seems to agree that reform could increase the Council's effectiveness, there is less concord as to how to bring it about. Many nations favor changes that suit their own interests and grouse about their rivals' points of view. As the debate drags on, proposals for reform pile up like flotsam on the shore, each idea thwarted by a barrage of mordant objections. 
So the process of reform has proven less efficient than the Security Council itself, and hope for change threatens to atrophy. The Security Council was created to serve as a bastion of peace and security in the world. It has the power to mediate disputes and to authorize peacekeeping operations, sanctions, and military action. Its members include representatives from 15 nations, five of which hold permanent seats. A minimum of nine votes is required for the council to pass a resolution, but the five permanent members have the lion's share of influence over important decisions. If any permanent member votes against a proposed measure, the resolution does not pass. This veto power held by the permanent members is the chief source of the Council's inefficacy. When there is disagreement among permanent members, a single no vote is enough to prevent the Council from taking action. Just the threat of a veto can throw negotiations into disarray, holding the Council hostage to the slow workings of diplomacy. This cumbersome process prevents the Council from reacting quickly to the exigencies of political crises. Accordingly, many critics claim it is incumbent upon reformers to amend the Council's voting procedures. Others demand that the number of non-permanent members be increased to limit the permanent members' power. While there is wisdom in both of these suggestions, debate as to how the UN can implement such measures remains frenetic with no end to the stratagems by which each nation hopes to gain advantage. An increasing number of critics have suggested doing away with permanent membership entirely and making all members of the Council temporary officials. While proponents of this reform may glean support from some corners, there is little chance of its coming to pass. The permanent members will not willingly give up their privileged positions. Since they have the power to veto the proposal, it is ludicrous to expect that such a resolution could ever be enacted. Moreover, permanent membership is designed to reflect the realities of global politics. In theory, permanent members consist of the nations that contribute the most pecuniary and military support to the UN, and that have the greatest power to influence world affairs, by diplomatic, economic, or other means. That is not necessarily the case today. The list of permanent members was drawn up just after World War II and no longer reflects the balance of global power. The fortunes of many nations have changed, for better or worse, in the past six decades. To better reflect today's world, influential nations such as Germany and Japan should be made permanent members, along with emerging regional powers like India, South Africa, and Brazil and the Council's voting process must be improved. Achieving these aims will require an unusual degree of compromise and consummate diplomatic tact, and there is no doubt that some nations will be nettled by the result. But the only alternative is to allow the Council to remain an ineffective institution, and this is an outcome that benefits no one.